What's the word, y'all? Welcome back, man. All-Star 2022 is around the corner. It's like a little over a month away, and I think it's a good time to start talking about the All-Star ballot. And, man, I spent the last couple days doing this. It is not easy, man. It's only 24 spots, 12 in each conference, but I'm here to talk about it, man. I'm here to talk about it and give you my own personal ballot. At the end of the day, I'm not predicting who I think will be in it. This is like if I had a vote, which I do not, these are the 12 people in the East and the 12 people in the West that will get the nod from me. This is a fluid thing, you know what I'm saying? This is hard, man. I spent the last couple days and some of these people aren't set in stone. You know, some people might have the ability to play themselves into my 12 spots in the next month or so. But as of right now, these will be my all-stars. Um, this video, I want it to feel more of like a, a podcast more than just a, a normal video of mine. So if you're one of the people that only care about who I have, I'm sure there's somebody that watched this entire video that will put it in the comment section. But for the people that's going to stick around and watch the whole video and just listen to me ramble about basketball and all-star appearances, I appreciate you. Be sure to leave a like. Now. All-Star 2022 is in Cleveland, Ohio. I've never been to Cleveland, but I will be in that joint. Um, in 2020, before the world shut down, Bleach Report put together this entire event that was open to the public where we had live shows. We had um, a performance from like Quavo and a bunch of different rappers and stuff. It was open to the public, and they're thinking about doing it again this year. I don't really know if this is public knowledge or not. But I will say we're, they're not completely sure if it will be open to the public because of the virus stuff. But I will say if you're going to be in the Cleveland area, an all-star weekend, even if you're not going to any of the festivities, but you're in Cleveland, follow me on socials, man. We might have a live podcast. You might be able to meet me and all of that stuff. And I'm, I'm always welcome to, welcoming to meet all the new people in there in, in Cleveland. Hopefully y'all nice to us. Hopefully the weather is not absolutely dreadful. Okay, so now to my list, all right? There are a few things that really bother me about the All-Star Ballad. The first one is that there's only 12 spots. Um, it's been 12 spots for the entirety of basketball, and, and basketball has evolved to the point now where it's 15 players to the roster, and I would like for the All-Star game to be 15 v. 15. It will just make it my job as making a ballot a lot easier because, listen, I got my 12 people that I have on the actual team, and in Eastern Conference, I got six names that are not in the game that, that deserve love. There are so many people playing at an all-star caliber level. There's going to be a lot of snubs, and I apologize. It's just, it's just the way things work. So if you had a 15-man roster, boom, it's a lot easier. But even then, I'm getting three more spots, which means that there's three more people on the outside looking at it. It's hard. It's going to be hard. Your favorite player might get snubbed. I'm sorry. It's just it is what it is. Um, The other thing, I wish it was positionless. I understand why they have positions in it. They don't want it. Like, we're talking about a league that for a long time was very guard heavy, and they didn't want the All Star game to be <laughs> ten, or 10 people on the court that is 6'5 and under, or 6'6 six, six and under. So I understand why positions are a thing, but it pigeonholed me so much, especially in the Eastern Conference, because there are not a ton of Eastern Conference forwards that deserve to be in there, but there are a ton of guards that are playing All Star level. So some of the guards that didn't make it, I would rather have than some of the forwards, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles y'all and the last thing is that i wish it wasn't east versus west anymore because we don't even play east versus west you know what i'm saying what if the eastern conference have 15 people that deserve it in the east and the western conference only got 10 what am i supposed to do so those are my gripes um and I, I know that's not an easy fix or something that they made never change but i'm just saying it made my job here a lot harder to do because of positions because there's only 12 people and because it's east versus west we do the whole draft thing anyway ladies and gentlemen so why don't we just open it up why don't we just open it up all right it's not like they plan for nothing it's not like i think it's baseball right baseball plays the all-star game and whoever wins that gets home court advantage in the world series we're not playing for anything are we there's not even no incentive. Well, some people have, like, contract incentives to be an all-star, but whatever. Okay, so this is the way things are going to go. Um, I'm going to announce some of my starters. We're going to talk about them and give them the reasons why they are my starters. Let's talk about the Eastern Conference because, honestly, the Eastern Conference was a lot harder to do than the Western Conference. And you know what? And I think that's that's because the Eastern Conference is the better conference right now, at least when it comes to um, the way teams are winning and losing and things like that. The Eastern Conference is better, which just means that they, they might have more talent nowadays. Um, I'm going to say my criteria was... Wasn't as strict this year as it was in previous seasons because we have health and safety protocols and we have injuries like that. I used to be a guy that's like, ah, this player is missing this many games, so because of that, he might not get the nod. But it just feels like everybody's missing time because everybody's gonna catch this damn virus in the NBA. If you are a player that plays all 82 games this season, the CDC needs to to take your blood and just inject it in everybody else's veins because you are the antibody to every single virus. It just seems inevitable that every player is going to catch this thing. So I, pretty much everybody that I have on my list has missed some time with health and safety protocol. 
So it is what it is. But I will say there are players that aren't on my list because they have been injured for a long time. Prime example of this is Bam Adebayo. He's missed over half the season right now. Some of that will help safety protocol, and some of that is just him being out with a legitimate injury. Um, in a Western Conference, Anthony Davis is going to miss a significant amount of time, and he will be back before the All-Star game. But in between, he's going to miss so many games. And, and I know... Anthony Davis is not a player that's having an amazing season, but the counting stats is there. If we're just going on counting, counting stats, Anthony Davis deserves some type of recognition, but the fact that he will be injured and miss so much time, it's a little bit difficult. And there are so, certain players that are similar to that as well that are right now injured, and we're going to we're gonna cross that bridge once we get there, right? I know I'm rambling. Um, the all-star starting guard, number one, is DeMar DeRozan. I hate the fact that the NBA has him as a guard. It makes things so much more difficult because this is a spot that I wish I could give to somebody else that was snubbed. DeMar DeRozan has not played guard for the Chicago Bulls this season. Sure, he's been a playmaker. Sure, he brings the ball up the court every once in a while. But for this season, he has been a small four and a power four. That is where he has played this entire year. So the fact that the NBA is still looking at DeMar DeRozan like he's on the Toronto Raptors is wild to me because it's not just a Chicago Bulls thing. This man ain't played guard in years. If you look at his, his position data for his entire time of the San Antonio Spurs, he was playing small four and power four. Even 2K last year changed this man's position to power forward. He has been a forward for the last four or five years. But I guess since he was under the radar and with the San Antonio Spurs and nobody's really watching them, they still look at him as a guard. So he has to start at the guard position, which, again, just takes away a position because there, there's, there's one Eastern Conference forward on my bench that I'm not saying he doesn't deserve to be there because everybody that is in the conversation deserves to be there. But there is a guy that got snubbed that I think deserves it more. But he's a guard. And yeah, okay. DeMar DeRozan, I think that is a lock. He should be a lock on everybody's Eastern Conference ballots because he has been playing to that level. Also, what I noticed when I was creating these lists is I'm a, I'm a guy that doesn't really look at the legacy of a player when I'm thinking about the all-star appearance often. Um, because there are some people that are perennial all-stars that have been all-stars for seven, eight years, nine years that might not be an all-star this year because I think that some people that might be younger are playing better than them. And honestly, I think that's the way it should be. I think we should be able to excommunicate somebody's past when we're talking about a 2022 all-star. I don't give a damn what he did in 2020 or, or the 2019-2020 season or 2018-2019. That shouldn't be super relevant when we're talking about this season. These are all-stars, especially when you talk about contract incentives and stuff. This is not some ha-ha-ha, let's just pencil a guy in because of this. No, he has to deserve it. DeMar DeRozan deserves it. The next squad position was, was between two people, and I will say, I'm not a guy that cares too much about who's the starter versus who's coming off the bench. Um, I know that it matters in the sense that when you get to um, you get to like the draft, I guess it matters a little bit more because I think they draft starters and then they draft reserves. I don't I don't really watch the All Star Draft. I watched it the first year and that was pretty much it. I watched the highlights of that. And the only thing that matters deeper than that is, like, you get an extra two minutes on TV in the announcements. But if you look at anybody's basketball reference that's ever been an all-star, it doesn't say seven-time starter, three-time reserve. If you're an all-star, you're an all-star. So I think about that, and I will say that Trey Young is my second guard. You're like Kenny. Um, De um, DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine are the number one team in the Eastern Conference. They're both averaging some crazy statistics. You're absolutely right. But I don't want people saying that I'm biased, so I'm giving it to Trey Young. Um, <laughs> I love some Zach Levine, but as long as Zach Levine is in the game, I don't really care who's starting, who's coming off the bench. But Trey Young hit himself. I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve it more than Zach Levine. I think they're similar, similar tiers. Um, Trey Young has been on an absolute tear. If you look at his game log over the past 10 or so games, there's, there's not any dookie. Like, sometimes players just have dookie games. Like, the other day, Steph Curry had nine total points. That's a dookie game for an MVP candidate. Trey Young don't have those. Even in the loss the other night, he had 56 points or 54 points or whatever it is. I know that the team hasn't been great. And that was his big knock last season. But this year is so much different than I didn't. I took it to consideration the standings a little bit less or maybe a lot less than I would in previous seasons. Because, again, every single team is going through health and safety protocol. And every single team might have two to three more losses on the record than they wouldn't have if they were close to fully healthy. And, and yes, the Atlanta Hawks are struggling. And they've been dealing with health and safety protocol. Defense ain't looked as great because Click Appel ain't looked that great. They was going ham at um at, at the Rooster Gallinari with the Portland Trailblazers regardless. Trae Young didn't make the All-Star game last year because he was putting up good counting stats on a bad team. This year, they're slightly, I mean, I mean, slightly better at this point than they were last year, but it doesn't really matter too much to me. He gets the nod at the All-Star power or point guard spot starting. 
The next three are locks to me. I don't need to give you um, why Kevin Durant deserves to be an all-star starter or why Giannis deserves to be an all-star starter or why Joel B deserves to be an all-star starter. Those three are absolute locks in my opinion. Who do I think is going to be the captain? I would guess is going to be Giannis again. I think Giannis had it last year, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe even a year before that. But Kevin Durant might get – actually, no. KD had it last year because I remember him. He was sitting in this apartment. I remember it was Kevin Durant. So I don't know who deserves to be the captain. It doesn't matter too much. It's between KD and Giannis. Maybe it's going to be KD because he might get more fan votes. But that is my Eastern Conference starters. I don't think there's anything too controversial now. I think the, might, the most controversial thing might be saying that Trey Young over Zach Levine. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because my first guard off my bench is Zach Levine. Honestly, if we were going to get rid of positions, I think it matters the most when it comes to the reserves because there's only two guard reserves and there's three forward reserves. And again, in the Eastern Conference, there's not a lot of forwards that I think deserve to get a ton of love. Um, and then when you get to the wild card spots, those two places don't have positions. So I can have two centers. I can have two, I mean, two forwards or two guards. It don't really matter. Um, but Zach Levine, I don't need to give you the argument. Zach Levine is putting up crazy efficiency again for the second year in a row and averaging 25-plus points per game. He's one of the few people in the league that are shooting 40% from three on like eight attempts or something crazy like that. Zach Levine is an absolute stud. There's no there's no if ands, or buts about it. He is a lock on my bench, and some people might have him started, which I respect too. Number two. It's a player that started off, and, and people were saying that um, this guy's washed. Do you remember the James Harden is washed narrative that was um, the first month and a half or two months of the season? Since then, he's had a couple 30 pieces. Um, he's had a couple triple doubles that are really good, and for the most part, he looks close to. I would Like some people are going full and saying, that, oh, he looks just like the old James Harden. I wouldn't go that far, but he looks like 85 86 percent of what James Harden normally is and that is enough for him to be an all-star in the Eastern Conference he's still on one of the best teams in the conference and a lot of that is him and Kevin Durant going ham uh, against other teams next we get to the forwards my my first forward was Jimmy Butler I don't know Jimmy Butler hurt his ankle a couple nights ago and he had already missed a bunch of time with a, a buttocks injury like a tailbone injury I'm gonna just say buttocks is a lot more fun to say and I don't know what's going on with that ankle, at least as I'm recording this video. Maybe more uh, stuff has come out after I'm recording this video. Uh, because of that, I think that we might need an injury replacement guy. We'll talk about that once we get there. It is super unfortunate that Jalen Brown is a guard and not a guard slash force. If we're going to have positions, I know it would get kind of murky if we have players that are guards and forwards. But Jalen Brown deserves to be a forward on this list, but he's not. And because of that, because of that, you might understand why I'm going next with like Jalen Brown got snubbed off of my list because he's a guard and I can't look at the guards that I have above him and say he deserves it more. Now, his teammate, Jason Tatum, is on here. But if I had to pick between Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, I probably would put Jalen Brown on my team. But Tatum is a forward, and I need a forward. So Jason Tatum's on the list. Now, again, Jason Tatum's not having a bad season. He might be less efficient than he was in previous years, but he's still having an all-star caliber season. But this is a team that doesn't deserve to have two all-stars because they have been disappointing. So I gave the nod to Jason Tatum over anybody else. And my last, or I guess maybe not my last, but my, my third forward off the bench is the fro, Jared Allen, man. Is the fro, Jared Allen. I don't really know how to explain how great of a player Jared Allen has evolved to because everybody knew for the entirety of Jared Allen's career he has been a lob threat and I know there are some people that still look at Jared Allen as strictly a lob threat but he is so much more I've watched so many Cavs games this season and I feel like I'm getting more and more impressed with his footwork down below um yes he is spoon fed but that's about him being in good positions and everything um his footwork is getting better and better and better so I had to give him that nod he's one of the best defensive centers in the entire league um the the Cleveland Cavaliers have one of the best are one of the best defensive teams in the league and a lot of that is him and a lot of that is the rookie Evan Mobley but I'm giving him the nod over any of the other forwards on the team because I think he deserves it more man um so those are my 10 players in the Eastern Conference now let's get to my wild cards because well it might get kind of wild and we're gonna have to have a fluid conversation here I made a tweet earlier today where I put hashtag NBA all-star hashtag Fred Van Vliet and <laughs> the reaction was exactly what I expected. Um, Raptors fans like, yeah, Kenny, you the man. Um, and I wasn't trying to pander to Raptors fans. I actually think he deserves to be there, and I'm putting him there. And then there is another portion of the replies is like, Kenny, you're bugging. And I don't think I am. 
Um, again, this is my ballot. I personally do not believe that Frank Van Vliet will make the All Star appearance or make an All Star appearance. But if I was given a ballot, I would have him on there. He is averaging 20 points per game, five rebounds, 6.7 assists. He's shooting 40% from three on nine attempts, and his the advanced stats absolutely love Frank Van Vliet. Here's a challenge for you. Watch minutes of the Raptors when Fred Van Vliet is not on the floor against a competent team. It is going to be dreadful. There's a reason why he's close to leading the league or in the top three or whatever it is in minutes played. Because when he is off the floor, the Raptors don't stand a chance. He is their all-star and he's putting up all-star statistics. In my opinion, he deserves to be in there. As I said earlier, I don't care about legacies and things like that. And personally, I do like to see new players get all-star nods. And Fred Van Vliet is one of those dudes. I was, I was doing a video a couple days ago, and we were talking about people that were giving their bad takes that, uh, over the last three to five years. And there was a Raptors fan that was like, ah, I didn't think that Fred Van Vliet would ever get to the point where he was a legitimate point guard. And he has got to that point. There's been a lot of progression in Fred Van Vliet's career as far as being an off-ball guy for, for Kyle Lowry and just being a guy that can go out and get you buckets to now being a guy that is one of the elite playmakers in the elite, in the league. I'm giving him my first wild card spot. And yes, it is maybe wild. It maybe I'm living up to that, but he deserves it. And my second wild card spot is Darius Garland. We're going to talk about snubs, I promise you. But Darius Garland is averaging 19 points per game, three rebounds, uh, 7.3 assists. He's shooting 38% from three on seven attempts. His case is very similar to Fred Van Vliet's. When he is not on the court, the team looks terrible. Watch the Cavaliers when they got Kevin Pankos or whatever the hell his name is, or they got, um, I guess, Brandon Goodwin right now, and Rondo is getting his things together. Um, he makes this team go. It would, it would have felt weird for me to put Jared Allen in the All-Star game and not Darius Garland because that would be like putting DeAndre Jordan in the All-Star game and not Chris Paul. You know what I'm saying? Those two guys work in tandem, and I think they deserve to be there together. Okay. Now, let's talk about the snubs because there are a bunch. I already mentioned that Jalen Brown is a snub. He just had a fucking, fi oh, he said a 50 piece. I'm sorry. This is not the channel where I talk like that. I thought I was in my, I, it feels like I'm on a podcast right now. I'm sorry. And on the podcast, we kind of got no filter. He just dropped a 50 piece. It feels weird to have him snub, but there's a team that can, I don't think deserve to have two. They do not deserve to have two. And I had to pick between Tatum and Brown. And since Brown is a guard, I couldn't put him in the wild card spot because now that leaves a forward spot. It's a lot of weird stuff here. Now, again, with Jimmy Butler being out with his injury and maybe being out with his injury, who gets the nod at the forward position? Well, you can make a you can make an argument. Uh, you can make an argument for Chris Middleton, but he's been up and down. And I would feel weird if Chris Middleton was in the All-Star game because I think Drew Holiday deserves it better, and he's one of my snubs. Who else is in the forward position that might deserve to get a little bit of love here? You could say Miles Bridges, maybe? You know what I'm saying? If we're talking about injury replacements, but it would feel weird for him to be an injury replacement if LaMelo not in it. I think LaMelo might make it over Fred VanVleet, honestly. Um, but, like, the forward position is weird, man. The four position is definitely weird. Like, maybe Sabonis. Sabonis is a guy that maybe deserve a little bit of love. I don't think Julius Randle gets a lot of love this season. I don't. I just don't think. I think that with the the Knicks um, losing more than they were last year and him not living up to his standards, I don't think he deserves. I think that Sabonis would deserve it just a little bit more because he is the the focal point of that offense and everything. But maybe he is the injury replacement. John Collins is a guy, but you can argue that the Atlanta Hawks don't deserve too because their number two, they're not even in a play in right now. So I don't know. Another guy that is snubbed. Is Drew Holiday. Um, Drew Holiday, all the advanced stats absolutely love him. And when I, I know that they struggled a bit when Giannis was out, which makes sense. Giannis is one of the best players in the in the world right now. So of course they're gonna struggle when he was out. But I I, I remember that that Drew Holiday was stepping back up and looking great. Um the defense is still elite and all the advanced stats love Drew Holiday. I, I felt weird about not having two all-stars for the Bucks. Um, so maybe that's another case for Drew Holiday just to be in there because the team is so elite. If I'm looking at the standings right now, I got two Bulls players. And this wasn't by design, by the way. I got two Bulls players. I got two Nets players. And the the um, the Bucks are right there on the same tier as them. So it'll feel weird to just have Giannis in itself. But I just couldn't find a place for Drew Holiday. He deserves to be there. But again, there's only 12 roster spots. Um, LaMelo is probably my biggest snub. Oh, no, you know what? There's two big, really, really big snubs. Um, LaMelo is a big snub. He is super entertaining to watch, obviously. He is super good at what he does. Um, but it's you can make an argument for him over DG, but I just feel like when DG doesn't play, Darius Garden doesn't play, the Cavaliers don't stand a chance to play or chance to win. I think that the Hornets could still potentially win some games when LaMelo is not there. And maybe they have, maybe they haven't. But I vividly know that um, Darius Garland missed three games and they lost all three of those games and it was bad. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
But when it comes to fun and exciting, and that's what the All-Star game is about, I think LaMelo is a guy that should be in there. It's just hard for me to put him on my personal ballot. But if you have him there, I completely understand. And then, I, actually, I know I said this for a few people, but Bradley Beal, Bradley Beal might be the biggest nut because he started off very, very slow. Even though the team was very successful at the beginning, Bradley Beal completely started off slow. But if you look at his stats over the last month, it's hard for me to say he don't deserve to be there. He definitely deserves to be there. Especially now that Spencer Dimity is out in the last couple of games, he's been point Beal. I think they were calling him vaxxed up Beal because since he got the vaccine, he's been killing the game. Um, I, I, like, I can't... This, this is what makes the All-Star bad because I will never say... Hmm, how, how do I want to word this? I can't say that Garland or Fred Van Vliet deserve it more than Beal, than LaMelo, than Drew Holiday, but I'm going to say on my ballot, I want to see them there. Does that make sense? It's There's not a big argument for like Bradley Beal not making it because his counting stats are coming around in the last month or so. You can make the argument that it's a full season and you need to perform for more than just a month. I don't know. But I think Bradley Beal has the potential to play himself into the real game. If he continues to play like this, right? If he continues to play like this for the next two to three weeks, I, I don't see a world where he doesn't actually make the All-Star game. I just don't. He's a guy that was averaging 35 points per game like did he make the All-Star game last season? Oh, my God. Because I remember that there was a conversation about whether Bradley Beal deserves to even be there. He was leading the league in scoring, but the team was god-awful. He did make it last year. But the year before that, he didn't when he averaged 30. That was the year. He averaged 30 the year before that and didn't make it. But last year, the world was like, I guess team record don't matter. Um, so the Easter Conference is, is interesting. It's hard. These are my ballots. And you can even tell I'm having second thoughts about some of the picks, but it's a fluid conversation, ladies and gentlemen. It is a very fluid conversation. So that is my Eastern Conference. I'm looking at the standings right now. The other Kyle Lowry, I know his counting stats are trash. He can't hit a shot. But the Miami Heat were missing Bam and Jimmy Butler for a very long time. And though Kyle Lowry wasn't like the leading scorer of this team that was still good, he was the quarterback. He was the, he was the guy that was on the court telling people where to be, still drawing a lot of charges, playing good defense. He deserves some recognition at least. Um, but I think I gave all the the notes to people that deserved it. Let's go to the Western Conference. Because the Western Conference starter situation is a little bit more difficult than the Eastern Conference. Um, I'm going to start off with the absolute locks. And lock number one is Stephen Curry. Don't need to tell you why. Lock number two is LeBron James. I don't need to tell you why. Lock number three is Nicole Jokic. Those are my locks in the starter position. Other than that, I got to think about my other guard. I got to think about my other forward. Um, and you know what? There, there are two people. I basically flipped the coin between these two people who deserve to start, who deserve to come off the bench. And the starter that came up was Donovan Mitchell. He just won player of the month. He's been having an amazing season. Now, I don't know if the counted stats say he's better this year than he was last year. But when I when I watch him play this year, he feels better than what he's, he was last year. I know for sure that, like, in the previous years of Donovan Mitchell's career, he struggled to finish at the rim and have that little floater game. And this year he's doing that to like a little above league average, which is great considering before that he was towards the bottom of the league for that type of volume. Um, so the fact that he's got that added to his bag just makes him and the team more dynamic. We're talking about the number one offense in the league by an absolute mile, and Donovan Mitchell is the fo focal point of that offense. So I flipped the coin between him and another guy we're going to talk about, and Donovan Mitchell got the nod. Shout out to Dono. And then the other starter spot, for the for the um Western Conference starters was a was was a it was a bit tough, man. If we talk about a forward here. Um I ended up giving it to Draymond Green. Is he have the best raw stats? Hell no. And ain't and ain't nobody else on my list that that don't that got uh counting stats worse than Draymond Green. But I gave him the all-star starter nod. I understand if you don't have him as a starter, completely understand. But as an all-star player, Draymond Green, in my opinion, is an absolute lock. He is the defensive player of the year by a mile this season. He is the on-court coach for the best team in the in the league right now. Is, well, let's see. Do they still have the best record? The best team in the league record-wise? Um, he is the on-court coach for that. And the team struggles when he's not there. I mean, what, what can I say? Draymond Green deserves to be an all-star. I just have him as a starter right now. If you don't have him as a starter, that's, that's completely okay. It does hurt that we have, like, positions again if if I could bring a guard up I would bring a guard up to be a starter but I cannot so I will not let's get to the bench again I think that the Western Conference was easier than the Eastern Conference like I had a bunch of players on my list that I saw as locks let me read them to you John Moran is a lock he was a guy that I flipped the coin for 
Who should start, Donovan Mitchell or John Morant? And ended up on Donovan Mitchell. Regardless, John Morant is a lock to be in an all-star game. I don't need to explain to you. He just um, won a game against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And we're talking about a team that has three seven-footers. He said he's not scared. He had a game against the the Nets the other night. On a back, this is a back to back. A Nets the other night, absolutely dominated. There's nothing that John Moran can't do. When John Moran was drafted into the league, they were like, ah, oh, he reminds me of Derrick Rose. Would the shot ever come around? It took Derrick Rose like ten, a decade for him to become a plus three point shooter. John Moran has got that in his bag in year number three. He's shooting forty percent from three on four attempts. That's not like um he's just shooting two and he's getting lucky. He's shooting four three point attempts a game and he's shooting forty percent. The most electric player when it comes to getting to the basket is also a dual threat from the three. It's ridiculous, bro. It's ridiculous. He has an argument for the most entertaining player to watch in the entire NBA. The All-Star game needs that. And John Moran is an absolute lock. The next absolute lock for me on the bench, Devin Booker. Devin Booker might not have the same counting stats as he did uh, the previous years and the previous years, which is funny because Devin Booker for the last, let me, I'm going to look this up really quick, but if I'm not mistaken, Devin Booker, the two times he has been an all-star, he was an injury replacement. Um, he was a guy that wasn't an actual all-star, but somebody got injured. So here you go, D book, you deserve it. He has the worst counting stats since his rookie season or his secondary, his second season in the NBA. <laughs> but he's not a but the, the Suns have got to the point now where they can win games without relying on Devin Booker to drop 30. There's games where he deserve he just uh decides that he wants to play make a little bit more. The thing that the big um development in Devin Booker's career is he's shooting six three pointers per game and he's shooting 41.7% from three. Devin Booker is always a bucket, don't get me wrong. Now he's hitting his threes. Now his two-point attempts aren't looking as good as previous years, but I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that Devin Booker, a guy that has been a, for the last three seasons averaged uh, 54% from the mid-range area, he will get back to close to 50%. I'm just, I think that he will get back there. But the fact that the three-point shot is looking so much better makes him an absolute lock. And to add on to it, he has one of the best teams in the entire league too. Devin Booker, lock. Next absolute lock, Rudy Gobert. I don't need to make an argument. I saw some people have their ballots and Rudy Gobert wasn't there, and I don't understand it. He is the defense of the, the Utah Jazz. Now, they're not one of the top five defenses like they were in previous years, but he is still the defense. They don't have much perimeter de defense on the entire team. It is all about funneling to Rudy Gobert and let him do his thing. This man, is I, he might still be leading the league in total dunks, and I know that I don't really say nothing for a guy that's 7-1. I don't need to, I, I, do I need to give you the reason why Rudy Gobert is an all-star? I don't think I do at this point. That was something I was trying to pitch to y'all four years ago. You understand it now. He also gets a ton of screen assists. So him and Donovan Mitchell work well together. You know what I'm saying? Him and Mike Conley work well together. They're, they're tested the limb. Uh, they play a lot of minutes together. Um, next guy that was a lock to me was Carl Anthony Towns. Now, the Minnesota Timberwolves are 17 to 20, and they looked really good before he went to health and safety protocol. Now, they were able to weather the ship a little bit. They're 5 and 5 in their last 10. But Carl Anthony Towns has always been a guy that's going to be able to give you the good counting stats. But it was like, hey, can you win us more games? And this team has been better this year than they have in the previous however many years. How, what is his actual averages? 24 points per game, 50% from the field, which is better than last season. Um, and then from three, he's shooting 42%. That is a career high. You know, and we're talking about about six attempts for your center. And his defense isn't terrible anymore. No, he's not Rudy Gobert, but his defense ain't terrible anymore. So for me, he was a lock to get his first all-star appearance since the 2018-2019 season. Wow. He was 23 years old. And, and I remember I remember when uh, GMs were polled, if you were to start your franchise with any player in the league right now, we're talking about 2018 Majority of them said Carl Anthony Towns. And then I think this year or the year before, he didn't get a single vote. <laughs> he's back to being an all-star caliber player. Now, he had always been an all-star talent, for sure. But he's winning more games. And that, that it like I said, it should matter, but it shouldn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Um, but he does get the nod here. Okay, great. Now, after that, I don't have any more absolute locks. Absolute locks. You can make an argument against some of the people that I have in here and replacing them 100%. But let me read you the rest of the people that I have here. Paul George. Paul George has missed some time. Um, Dylan outside of health safety protocol, but because of injury, I don't know his timetable. He might not even get back in time to make another um, like push for the All-Star game. And because of that, he might not actually get in it. Because if I'm not mistaken, the media has to get their votes in in the next week or so, which matters. But I don't know when um, 
like the coaches or whoever does the reserves. I don't know when they have to do there. So Paul George is a forward. The forward position in the Western Conference is a little bit lackluster, kind of similar to the East. The forward position, this is a guard-centric league, and I understand that. Um, but the forward position is kind of weird. So, like, if I was going to take Paul George out because he's injured, what forward do I put there? I already said that that um, Anthony Davis is injured. So he not if Anthony Davis is back, he'll be the forward I slide in there. But if he's not back, who is the other forward? You have like Chris Dapsworzingis has an argument. He's averaging good stats, um, and, and he was able to continue to let the team be okay while poor, um while uh, Luca was out. Who is the other forward I have on my list? Brandon Ingram deserves some type of recognition. I don't know if injury replacements have to fit the position. That is something I don't know. But if they don't, great. If they do, I don't know. Um, let's talk about my two wild card spots. Wildcard spot number one is Christopher Emmanuel Paul. I, I think he should be a lock, but I can understand if you're saying that he is. He isn't. He's not having the same statistical season as he had in the recent years, but he's still the the quarterback on one of the best teams in the league. His counting stats look like 14 points per game, nine assists, four rebounds, 48 percent from the field, and only 31 percent from three, which is absolutely terrible for Chris Paul, who's been a career. Um, 37% three-point shooter. So this is a down year from three. It's like Devin Booker took the three-point shooting out of Chris Paul. Um, but I would assume that that's going to go up. His free throw percentage is even down. I never really even noticed that. Um, but Chris Paul has an argument to be an all-star replacement. Or not all-star replacement, all-star wild uh, card spot. And then the last guy is a guy that has also missed time. But I think that he is similar to Bradley Beal in the sense that he's going to play his way back into it. And that's Luka Doncic since he came back from his injury. He had a double-double in the first game. Oh, he had a double-double in both games. One of them being like a 15-assist game. Luka Doncic is, is an all-star talent. It just sucks that he missed so much time and that the Dallas Mavericks started off kind of slow. Because usually a guy that will be a starter. But since he missed time, and since he started off out of the gate kind of out of shape and, and slow, he's more of a wild card for me this season. But regardless, he is an all-star. Let's talk about the snubs, because there are many. As you can see, I did not add Damian Lillard to my all-star ballot. And if he was in the all-star game, if you have many all-star game, I'm not saying you're wrong. Um, because he started off very, and I mean very, very slow. But in the last month or so, he's completely got it together. The only problem is... <sighs> I guess I'm, I'm kind of picking and choosing when this matters as I'm talking about it. But the team being so damn bad is a knock on Damian Lillard because, honestly, the team came out the gate struggling. And if he was playing better, I don't think they're in the place that they are right now. I know that the defense is god-awful, and part of that is Damian Lillard, for sure. I mean, he's a focal point guy. He's the guy that's guarding other guards. You know, you want his defense to be better. But if he was an all-star, I'm not saying that they're wrong for having him. You know what I'm saying? Um, but he's not on my ballot, man. It's, it's tough to say. Dave is one of my favorite players to watch, for sure. But it, it's tough to not have him on his ballot. Even somebody on Twitter was like, hey, if Dave is on your ballot, it's going to be a problem. And I said, hey, get ready for some problems, man. Get ready for some problems. I think that every every guard that I had over him have had a better season, have had a better season than him right now. Every guard that I named over him has had a better season. He might be the first one off the list when it comes to replacements if a guard were to get injured. But, yeah, everyone has had a better year. Another guy that got snubbed, and I really, and I mean really, really, really wanted to put this guy on my ballot, it was DeJounte Murray. Um, and I know there are going to be Spurs fans like, man, we get snubbed again. And I honestly, I think you will. And not just from my ballot, I think from the overall NBA, I think DeJounte Murray is going to get snubbed. He's averaging about 18 points per game, about nine assists. I'm rounding up for him a little bit. And eight rebounds, uh, 44% from the field, 34% from three. He is fun to watch. You know, his defense is maybe not at all defensive caliber like it was early in his career, but he's still a good defender. And I, the, the Spurs are a weird team because even though they're sitting at the 11th seat, they're on a three-game losing streak right now. But the last time I checked, they had a positive point differential, so they should be winning more games than what they're, they are. Um, but they're just not. And it's not a knock for DeJounte for, to not have him. But again, similar to what I said about Lillard, I just think the other guards on the list deserve it more at this point. And then another guy that was snubbed was Shea Gilgis-Alexander. Yeah, Shay's been hooping, man. Shay's been hooping. My boy Cone asked if I was pushing the SGA agenda. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not. It's hard for me to have him over the other guards in the league. Now, if I'm looking across the league, some other people that might deserve to get some nods. Um, it's not many, man. It's not many. The Kings don't have a player that deserves to have it. I gave it to LeBron. I don't think the Lakers other than Anthony Davis deserve another one. Um, I already said that Brandon Ingram is in conversations. The Rockets don't deserve one. Shea got his nod. It's tough, man. It's tough. Those are my 12 players. Those are my 12 players on each conference to make it. 
I gave y'all some snubs that I absolutely hate. But again, everybody can't get in there. I'll be in there. I mean, I won't be in the games, but I'll be in the arena. You feel me? I wouldn't be surprised if this is a year where some people opt not to not to make it. And as far as like injury replacement without having a real injury. Um, and I wouldn't even blame people. You know, I actually I actually I kind of thought that last year. Nobody actually did it. Um, I, I wouldn't blame people, though. You know, it's a real we're a weird world we're living in right now where maybe making that extra trip ain't really worth it. Maybe you're a player that would rather just be at the crib with the family in these this weekend. Want to rejuvenate on your body. That's what Jimmy Butler did a few years ago. He was like, ah, I'm an all-star. I'm a, I am don't feel like playing, though. I don't feel like playing. I would rather rejuvenate on my body. And I think that, I think it was an option last year that if you were invited, you could opt not to go. In previous seasons, before the virus, that was an option. If you were an all-star, you had to beat up, my boy, whether you wanted to or not. But last year, they gave them an option because of all the stuff that's going on around the league and around the world that if you wanted to opt out, it's okay, you can. And I, would be, I wouldn't be surprised if more people did that. Um, yeah, man, this is, this is tough, man. I spent the last couple of days doing it. It's not the perfect list at all by any means, um, but it's my list. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Who are some people that I missed that, that you have there? And who do you think, you know what, we'll just wait to see who actually makes it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I appreciate y'all. Oh, who's a guy, this is a good question too, who's a guy that you think might make it who doesn't deserve to make it? There it is. All right. And I'll be looking in the comment section, um, and I'll see y'all soon. Enjoy basketball, y'all.